I'm Dave Annell. Welcome to episode four of Setting the Record Straight. In episode three, we had a look at a process I use when I'm trying to locate a particular ancestral address, largely focusing on maps. Today, I want to take a look at some other sources that we can use to help us to understand more about the history of the places that our ancestors lived in. Directories are an essential source when it comes to understanding where our ancestors lived, where the houses were, where the streets were that they lived in. And I'm going to look at this collection here. It's a fantastic collection on ancestry called uh, of London directories. It's London city directories, but it's it's covering all parts of London. And you can search by name. I prefer to browse, really, because um, you can get an idea of where you're looking and I'm going to select the Post Office London directories. You see there's a fantastic range of them. They go from 1801 right up to 1943. So a really good range. You can you can track changes over the years. I'm going to select the entry for 1881, <clears throat> the 1881 directory. And I'm going to go to the page that I know Meard Street is on, 2143. And we can see the entries for Meard Street and Meard's Court up here. Not a lot, not not many people listed here. In fact, for Meard Street, there's only this William Hatfield who has a lodging house at number two. But you can see that it tells you where the street is located. So Meard's Court in Soho comes off number 56 Wardour Street and Meard Street comes off number 68 Dean Street in Soho. So <clears throat> you get a good idea of, of what we're actually looking at here. If we go to the entries for Dean Street, which are on 1956, uh, we can see Dean Street starts down here. And what it's telling you is the roads that come off Dean Street. So Carlisle Street is in between number 12 and 13 Dean Street. And you can see how useful that can be for tracking down exactly where the, uh, the house that your ancestor lived in might be. And we carry on with Dean Street and it goes to Queen Street, Old Compton Street, Church Street, King Street, etc. If we compare that with the map, we can see here's Carlisle Street, here's Queen Street, here's Old Compton Street, Church Street, King Street, and then it comes back up the other side. If we go back to the directory, you can see that rather than having the odds and evens on different sides of the road, what we've got is just consecutive numbering and it comes all the way down to number 55. Uh, in fact, I think to number 60, King Street here, and then it comes up the other side, back um, up to Old Compton Street. And we can see then Meard Street comes here between number 66 and 69 Dean Street. So that helps us just to locate exactly where the road is, and we can work out by counting on the map which house we're, we're, we're looking at. Now, there are also, we've looked at this 25-inch map of Meard Street, which shows pretty good detail. There are actually some more detailed ones. This map is actually a five foot to one mile, published in 1874. Phenomenal detail. Um, you look, we've got the railings at the front of the house here. Uh, we've even got here, if we go back onto Dean Street, you can see these bit here, these bits here are steps leading up to the houses. And uh, as if by magic, we can go to the street view of Dean Street. And uh, on the modern map, we'll just come down here. And if we look at this house here, we can see there indeed is the step that we're seeing on that map. And there's the, the one next door. So that's these two little steps there. Phenomenal amount of detail on these old maps. Another source I want to look at is this British History Online website. This has got a number of fantastic sources on it. Uh, I'm looking today at the Survey of London, um, which has started in the 1890s, and I think this volume was published in the 1960s. It's a volume covering St Anne, Parish of St Anne, Soho. And I'm going to, there are several ways of searching this. You can just put in keywords and I could put in Meards there and, and find something for Meard Street. But I happen to know that if we go down to this section here, we will find the entry for the Pitt Estate in Dean Street covering Meard Street. And the amount of detail here is just stunning. Um, there's so much information. We've got even, unfortunately, it's the wrong side of the road, but we've got these plans of the the buildings looking face on at them. Uh, even floor plans of the houses, sectional view of the house, 
just just amazing detail so although we're not actually looking at the house that the, the levy family lived in we are getting an idea of what it was all like and it gives you some amazing information here now what particularly interests me is why when we look at the the mead street here why we have two separate roads on what is just one thoroughfare it does seem strange to have Mead's Court and then Mead Street. Why not have the whole thing just as one road? And it's also quite interesting that there's this sort of dog leg in it. It's not going straight through between uh, Warder Street and Dean Street. There's a sort of hook as we get to this part here. And then I started noticing that at the same point of this division between Mead Street and Mead's Court, we can trace a line all the way from Old Compton Street, all the way up here to the left of Richmond Mews, to the left of Richmond Buildings, across Anne's Court, which again you can see has a little dog leg in it. And we can keep going and we've still got this one line running straight through the landscape all the way up to Oxford Street. Now that sort of thing doesn't happen just by chance. And you can almost always trace the history of lines like this back to original field boundaries. And there's no exception here because the the that line that we're seeing through here actually divides two estates. And if we go right back to the start of this development of Soho Fields and this book here, we'll see this map that shows that line dividing these two estates. And right down here, there's Mead Street. And we can see that our what was Mead Street is in on the right in this section here, which is the Pitt Estate. And then the bit that was Mead's Court on the left was originally in a different estate and was in, I think it's Pulteney Estate it was. And when you read the details of Mead Street, you can find out that actually the reason for the two streets was the left-hand side that was Mead's Court was originally blocked off. There was a house at the end here. We'll look at it on this map here. There was a house here that made Mead's Court a cul-de-sac and made, meant that there was no access through to Mead Street. So another source I want to show you are these Charles Booth maps, uh, poverty maps they're known as. What Charles Booth did in the late 19th century, he went around all the streets in London and he categorised them in, in various ranks from the upper class uh, wealthy properties down to what he called the lowest class vicious semi-criminal. And we can see here uh, when we go to Meard Street that it's middling it's this this category here mixed some comfortable others poor so this is where the, the levy family were living this is obviously a little bit after they were in Mead Street but it still gives us a good idea but there are also these amazing notebooks which were compiled by the researchers who did the work for Booth on the ground and if we look at this section here we can find the page on Mead Street and it says here Mead Street has become a Jews haunt. Some come here from Whitechapel and some from a broad green. Great many children in this street, well fed, dirty, well clothed, has been Jewish for the last four or five years. Um, I think this was published about 1890, this book. So um, fascinating detail, um, covers the whole of London, definitely worth looking at. There's just one more thing I want to show you. Um, I ended episode three with this view of what had been number five Mead Street and is now number six Mead Street. And uh, it was mentioned by someone on Twitter that they really wanted to zoom in on the blue plaque. So, Ali, this is for you. I'm going to zoom in and we'll see that the blue plaque commemorates the fact that a man called Thomas Hearn, a watercolourist, lived here. Uh, in fact, it's mentioned in the British History Online uh, website that we looked at before. He was listed as living here in 1783. Now, by complete coincidence, Thomas Hearn is someone of interest to me personally, because this is his Wikipedia page. It talks about his work as an artist. 
But one particular aspect of his life, or rather his death, that it mentions here, it says that he lived in, he died in Macclesfield Street in Soho, but he was buried at Bushy in Hertfordshire, which is where I live. And um, I've been interested in him because he did a few paintings of the local area, including this wonderful brush drawing of the little bridge over the river, which is just at the back of my house. If I walked out of my house, I could be there in two minutes. And this is a very early, in fact, probably the only view of that uh, particular version of the bridge. There's been two or three bridges in that place since then. And I was fascinated to discover that Thomas Hearn had lived in this house that the Levy family later lived in. If you want to subscribe to these videos, just click on the link on my YouTube page. And if you have any suggestions for topics you'd like me to cover on future episodes of Setting the Record Straight, please let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching. Thank you.